President Trump has probably made his worst foreign policy decision in his entire presidency. Has he betrayed the Kurds? It certainly looks that way. But what Trump has done is no different to what successive American presidents have done in the Middle East. And in fact, many of our governments have done in the Middle East, including the British government. And what they've done is they have failed to understand Islamist ideology. They have failed to understand what drives the jihad, the insurgency, the global jihadist insurgency, not just in the Middle East, but throughout the globe. And of course, it is Islamist theology, Islamist ideology that is very, very firmly based, based in the texts of Islam and is very, very firmly based in the history of Islam. We shouldn't be surprised that the Turks are attacking the Kurds and we shouldn't be surprised if there is a genocide against the Kurds by the new self-appointed caliph of the Ottoman Empire, Tayyip Erdogan. What President Trump has done is no different to what Clinton did. It's no different to what Bush did before 9-11. It's no different to what Barack Obama did in 2011. And each one of those presidents that I've just named, and we could go right the way back to President Bush and also President Reagan. President Reagan, much as he was a great president and he basically won the Cold War along with Margaret Thatcher, used jihadist proxies in Afghanistan to humiliate and defeat and break the Soviet bloc. The jihadists were used to do that in the 1980s. We trained them, we armed them, and with collusion with Saudi Arabia and Pakistan, we funded them and gave them the intelligence and the wherewithal to beat the Russians in Afghanistan. And of course, that came back in a mighty blowback in 2011. The Clinton administration failed to take decisive action. Remember the film Black Hawk Down about the disastrous operation in Mogadishu? Clinton didn't realise that that wasn't just some jihadist street gangs he was taking on. That was the embryonic jihadist movement that was going to come back so violently to attack the United States in 2001. And of course, when Bush came to power, the Bush administration were obsessed with Iraq and obsessed with finishing the war in Iraq. Even before 9-11 happened, they had an obsession. And of course, every single one of these administrations has been wedded to the Saudis and to the Saudi royal family and gives tacit to support, support to the Saudi royal family. In 2011, Barack Obama pulled the troops out of Iraq. Mission accomplished, he said. Operation's over. Remember President Bush standing on the deck of an aircraft carrier and saying, we've done it. We've won. None of these presidents understand the jihadist ideology and the idea of a long war. A long war cannot be won by pulling your troops out of a country prematurely. And a long war cannot be won by destabilising regimes in the Middle East, however vicious or unpleasant they are. Of course, once Saddam Hussein had been deposed, the bloodthirsty hawks set their sights on Libya. And as Libya was falling, and, and as the European Union, the first action really of the European Union with American air power, British and French air power, supporting jihadists against that evil IRA-supporting dictator, Manwar Gaddafi. Our government, our government was complicit in the assassination of Colonel Gaddafi. As vile as he was and as disgusting as he was, our government 
was complicit. And our news media, our bloodthirsty and blood-soaked news media, almost cheered as that man was dragged out of a drainage ditch. And from what we hear, he was, he was vilely abused and violated before he was shot in the head. And, and we could say good riddance, because he supplied tons of weapons to the IRA. But is that the way Western civilised democracies should behave towards other powers? And also towards powers that were coming in from the cold? Then, of course, once Barack Obama pulled the troops out of, out of Iraq, and once Libya was destabilised and basically destroyed... The sights turned on Assad and Syria. And Britain and America and the Western powers with their jihadist friends in Qatar, in Saudi and in Turkey armed and trained jihadists to fight against Assad. And some of the most heinous war crimes were carried out by Sunni jihadists in Syria. Christians were slaughtered wholesale. The Christian West, or the supposedly once Christian West, supported jihadists that were slaughtering Christians, Orthodox Christians, Evangelical Christians in Syria. Alawites were slaughtered. Shia were slaughtered. Anybody that did not subscribe to the jihadist ideology of the so-called Free Syrian Army were killed. And then, thankfully, thankfully, the Russians intervened and started attacking the jihadists. Nearly led to World War Three, And I believe that if Hillary Clinton had been elected president, it would have led to World War Three. Then, of course, we know the story. Trump got elected and Trump joined in the attacks against ISIS and armed and helped the Kurds. Far more than Barack Obama did. Barack Obama armed and helped the jihadists that eventually became ISIS. That is a point of fact with his friends in Turkey and his friends in Qatar and his friends in Saudi Arabia. Now, I'm no fan of the Russians and I'm certainly no fan of the Iranians and Hezbollah. The Iranians and Hezbollah are just a mirror image of the Sunni jihadists. The Shia jihadists, the Shia jihadists are a mirror image of the Sunni jihadists. And I believe that Iran and Saudi Arabia will try and drag the whole of Western civilization down with them as they try and participate in a struggle for Islam between two extreme ideologies. So where does that leave us now? With Trump and his phone call to Erdogan, the caliph of Turkey, I think it was last Sunday night. Trump, I believe, has made a colossal mistake. It has been callous. I don't think it's been calculated. I think it's been foolhardy and it's been rushed. But what Trump's done is added to a catalogue of mistakes that have been made by US presidents because they do not understand the history and the ideology of jihad, the history and the ideology of the caliphate, the history of the Ottoman Empire, the history of the Arab caliphates. They have failed to understand what they're up against or they're in denial. And once again, the Kurds who back in the early 1990s after the Iraq war, the British army, the Marines, the British Air Force deployed to northern Iraq to protect the Kurds. And the Kurds built a thriving nation in northern Iraq. That nation was nearly overrun by ISIS and hardly anybody lifted a finger to help them. Remember? Remember the, 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 the Yazidis on Shingar Mountain? And the Americans did so little to help them. Barack Obama, George Bush, Bill Clinton, Bush Senior and even Ronald Reagan all had a part to play in what is happening in Syria now. But President Trump 
is totally responsible for the decision that he made not to support the Kurds and to pull the troops out. And I believe that is a decision that is going to reinvigorate ISIS. We've already heard on the news today that ISIS are attacking Turkish cap Turkish towns, and there the, the, there's been a mass jailbreak. 750 hardened ISIS fighters have escaped from prison. Well done, Donald Trump. You may join the ranks of Obama, of Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State. You see, crooked Hillary, as, as Trump called her, was just as complicit as Barack Obama. Goes right the way back. I still want to know why Saudi Arabia wasn't attacked after 9-11. The Americans seem to look for a smoking gun. And yes, they pointed in the right direction when they hit Afghanistan. Why didn't they hit Pakistan? Why didn't they hit Saudi Arabia? Why did they divert all their resources and power to Iraq that wasn't a threat and wasn't run by jihadists and wasn't sympathetic to, to the jihadists? People say that we should learn from history. Sadly, President Trump who up until now, I would have said, had played a good and clever game with his foreign policy. Sadly, President Trump joins a long line of American presidents who do not know enough about history to hold that office. All I hope is that Mike Pence can soon take over and do a better job because goodness help us if we get one of those lunatic Democrats running the free world. Well, Mr. Trump, I believe you've made a mistake. It looks like you're not going to back down. You're not going to change your policy. You have betrayed the Kurds. And I, I've seen all the posts on, on social media from all the Trump fanatics. Oh, the Kurds are all communists. Well, so what? We fought on the same side as the communists in the Second World War to defeat fascism. Is it not right to fight with communists now? To defeat Islamo-fascists. And Erdogan is an Islamo-fascist. The Qatari government do support Salafists and jihadists. The Saudi government, maybe they don't now, but for years they supported jihadists, Salafists and exported their vile, disgusting ideology around the globe. Their intolerant Islamo-fascist ideology. It's about time the West really realised who our friends are. Well, that's it. That's the rant over. Um, I believe Trump's made a huge mistake. I hope he changes his mind. Great respect for what he's done in so many other areas of policy and the way he stood up against the liberal elite. But unfortunately, I think on this occasion, he has made a huge error of judgment. See you all soon.